Hello and welcome to Shea Guevara video number four. What we have completed so far is we have a uh, spreadsheet set up. We have completed the income statement for the first two years with the exception of the depreciation calculation in the 2019 year and the interest calculation. So we will wrap those up in this video, but the main intention of this video is to talk through the first two years of the balance sheet forecast to make sure that we have those calculations all sorted out. And once we've completed those calculations, we are then fully set up as far as our forecast is concerned, and we can just copy and paste the numbers all the way to the end of our five-year projection. Okay, so let's come here to the share capital component and you'll see that this number is unchanged from the previous year because no additional equity capital has been raised in this business. And you'll see when we complete this we will have five million in capital under share capital for every single year as there's no additional capital. All right. The number that is changing in the capital part of the balance sheet is there's a change in the retained earnings. So of course this is a cumulative number and the way it is calculated is we use the year before and we add what is coming out of the income statement. So let's put in here some arrows that tell us where these numbers come from and you can simply see there that it is taking last year's retained earnings and it is adding in the profit after tax that is coming out of the income statement. Now normally you would actually add in the retained earnings from the income statement however I have made the assumption in our forecast that there will be no dividends for the duration of our forecast. So for the purposes of this I'm simply going to use the profit after tax in my retained earnings calculation. All right. so in fact in this year 2018 the retained earnings goes down because we made a loss but you will notice that in the next year it goes up as we make a profit and therefore the retained earnings increase in the balance sheet. All right. Let's get rid of our arrows. Then I am choosing to keep the loans as zero. So I know we are borrowing money. We are borrowing money to invest in CapEx. And to remind you that number is up here. It's the fit out cost. It's 900,000 Rand per cafe. And we have to borrow money to achieve that. So the way I'm managing that is the money that is being used to fit out the capex and the the loans i am doing it under the overdraft which i'm calling a plug number in other words that is going to be the final balancing number in my in my balance sheet that forces the balance sheet to balance now the question that's provided in the case is asking us how much loans or what is the loan requirement in order to fund this growth endeavor and that overdraft number is going to tell me the maximum that I need in order to fund this by using the overdraft in my forecast it means this is the only moving number as far as the debt or the plug number is concerned so I don't want to have loans and overdraft where there's two different types of, of debt. It might be that we structure the business in future quite differently to the way we do our over, to, to the way we do our forecast. But for now, let's just assume that the overdraft number is all the debt requirement that we have. Okay, so we will come back to that just now. Let's move on down here to the the fixed assets. So the way I've structured this is just to recognize that there is original assets that we've got and these original assets cost us 
8 million rand those are the 10 cafes it cost a little bit less to fit out those 10 than it's costing us now and you'll see that these cafes are on here at the original cost then I'm going to introduce the new capex as that happens and I'm going to then do a calculation underneath here to find out what is the accumulated depreciation for these assets as we go along and that will help us calculate this fixed asset number which is a what's called a net book value so it's the capital cost minus the accumulated depreciation so we need to do a little calculation here in order to determine that accumulated depreciation and I'll show you how I do that in fact let's go and have a look at that now so I constructed here very elaborately and not necessary to do this but just as a means of showing you what is happening in terms of these different cafes so it starts off here that here are the cafes the first 10 of them all right so this was a 8 million rand investment the depreciation after year one is 800,000 that's the 10% that they talk of and therefore the accumulated depreciation at the end of that year is only one year of depreciation is 800,000 so 8 million less the 800,000 gets you 7.2 million so as we go along with the original 10 cafes you can see how the depreciation accumulates over time and eventually in the future here a few years beyond 2022 we will have fully depreciated all of those assets in 2018 we start with the capex there's the 2.7 million so those are the three cafes at 900,000 but there's no depreciation in this year because we only depreciate from the following year when we start generating revenues so in the following year the 2019 there is the depreciation for these three cafes so what's the accumulated depreciation for them after the first year there it is and their book value for these cafes is simply this 2.43 million now what I can do is I can recognize that we've got depreciation for the existing cafes plus depreciation for the new cafes and I've done a little sum down here that gets me that annual depreciation number so that's the number that I want to use in my income statement for the depreciation and then I can simply say well here's the original cafes here's the uh, new cafes and here is the accumulated depreciation for all the cafes all right so the calculation just proceeds as uh, as it has in the previous years okay so you might want to construct a little schedule like this that helps you determine all the uh, all the depreciation etc calculations along the way let's keep going here with the balance sheet so back here in 2018 we've got some debtors so debtors remember are customers that owe us money and what we've got going here is 20% of our sales 20% of our sales those are the business customers those are the credit sales so only credit sales can convert into debtors so the first thing I'm doing is I'm saying right we're going to do 10 million of sales how much of that is on credit 20% and then based on the 20% of sales I'm then going to find out if they're paying me on 30 days what then is owing to me so that's the debtors day formula that we use in there to calculate that remember debtors days is debtors over credit sales times 365 but now what we're doing is we've got the debtor days we are solving for debtors so you'll have to do your maths around putting that formula together inventory works in a very similar way the difference is we don't have this portion of inventory for credit here we're just taking the entire cost of sales let's have a look at our formula here the cost of sales based on the stock days and we are reverse engineering to say how much stock do we have to have on hand 
in order to have 25 days worth of cost of sales. The cash here, this is simply 2% of the sales. Okay, so that's, we can plug that in directly and that's not complicated. So we've got these current assets. I'm simply summing these to the top. Creditors, so we are buying some goods from our suppliers and we are taking 45 days in order to pay them. Remember creditors is based on cost of sales and I'm reverse engineering to say what is the creditors number. All right, so now you'll find yourself in a position where you've completed the capital part of the balance sheet, you've completed the operations part of the balance sheet, but you will have a missing number in terms of what the overdraft is. So what I've done is I've very simply said, well, this balance sheet must balance. So let's make this equal to the capital part of the balance sheet and then work out what does the overdraft have to be so that this balances. And here I've got a little formula in here and we can see what are the components. And I'm simply saying we've got to take the capital and adjust for the fixed assets and the current assets and the creditors in order to find out what is the overdraft number. So I'm going to leave it to you guys to come up with your maths calculation and of course you can look at my formula here to see pretty much how it's done so that you can work out the plug number or the overdraft, the amount of debt we need in order to fund this. And then once you've set this up appropriately, you will be able to copy and paste this going forward. But now that we've got the debt number, we are able to calculate the interest expense in the income statement for the next year. So I'm just going to double click on there just to show how I'm doing this. I am adding the long term debt and the overdraft to say what's the total debt amount and then multiply it by the interest rate in order to get the interest expense. Remember, we are doing this to avoid the circular reference problem that I spoke about in the last video. So now that we have completed the income statements and the balance sheets, what we can do is you can copy and paste this right. I have already done that so I'm just simply going to bring my numbers back here because they actually are just written in white text underneath and as you copy and paste this right you should start to get the same numbers coming out as I have and we're now in a position where we have structured our income statement and balance sheet got all the numbers talking together talking to each other and completed our five-year forecast and we're making good progress. We now have the future laid out in front of us. We have the future driven by all these different variables here. So what we can do is we can come back and change these variables at any time and see how that affects our forecast. And we are now set to proceed in the next video with determining what is the free cash flow. So you'll see that heading there. What is the free cash flow that materializes from this forecast? I will see you in the next video.